we're going to talk about Jupiter terminal. So in the next few minutes, I'll try to explain to you what Jupiter terminal is. So let's get started. So when you work with Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab, uh, what you're going to see um, is something called terminal. So you can see on the bottom left, that's called the Jupyter uh, Notebook terminal. On the right is Jupyter Lab terminal. Uh, they are actually the same thing, uh, just different color. So before we get into the terminal, uh, let's talk about the operating system. So I hope you know those operating systems, uh, particularly the ones in the middle. So on the left side, that's something called MS Doors. So I actually started in 1981. Um, I never got a chance to use it. Uh, I, I didn't even think my family had a TV at that time. And on the right side, uh, I think the Google Fuchsia operating system will have a great future. But the, this operating system you need to get familiar is the ones in the middle, okay? So let's start with the MS doors. So at the beginning, when you open a computer, all you see is something that is very dark. It's the one on the right, uh, right bottom corner. And so the person who actually created this MS doors operating system actually was Bill Gates. Uh, he didn't really create it, he kind of purchased from someone and then he made some modification. So that became the first uh, Microsoft operating system, something called MS Doors. Okay, I never got a chance to use it. Um, I didn't even think my family had a TV at the time, um, definitely not a computer. So, you know, after a few years and Bill Gates decided to, um, you know, create some lights. Let's see what the light is. So in 1985, right? So he started Windows One. Windows One. I never seen that one. And then 1987, and he started Windows Two. And again, 1990 started Windows Three. And 1992 started with Windows 3.1. I don't know if if any of you have ever played this something called Minesweeper. Actually, I played many hours uh, on that. I'm not sure what I was playing on Windows 3.1 or Windows 95. But anyway, so in 1995, well, they created something called Windows 95. So, and then 1998, we have seen those Windows 98, Windows XP, uh, Windows 7, 8, 10. So that's basically the history of the Microsoft operating system. So, but the command line, which you see on the top um, has always been there, even though they created something called a GUI. GUI means graphical user interface. So this this command line has always been there, but so the window didn't really update it until the Windows Seven came out. So you can see on the on the bottom. So in Windows Seven, they are they didn't really kind of upgrade it, but they were just like. Uh, create a new one, right? It's something called a Windows PowerShell, which is quite powerful. You can write programming language in there. Uh, you can do some scripting. So it's, it's, it's quite powerful. If you have PC, I definitely recommend you to just try to explore it, right? Uh, but the command line is still there. So basically that's the history, okay? So on the Mac, actually underneath the Mac actually is using something called Unix. So the Mac is actually using the Unix system. So Unix system, you can see on the right side, um, they are using the terminal, like say very heavily, right? And the same thing on the Mac. So the Mac is, you know, user, some users are using terminal to do quite a few things. For example, you want to search for some files under certain pattern, right? Or you want to delete some files or do some internet, you know, connection troubleshooting. So it's quite useful for some people, okay? So basically, that, so that's the terminal for the Mac. And if you can see it, that's my computer and I find terminal is just open for you. And this on the Unix one, and you can see on, you can see here. Actually, the color doesn't make any difference, right? It's just, you can change the color any way you want. So that's the terminal on the Mac and on the Unix and uh, also on the PC. So the Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab terminal actually uh, is the same um, depending on where it's rising, right? So if you're on the Windows, it's same as PowerShell, okay? If on the Mac, it's same as Mac Terminal. And if it's on, running on the Unix, it will be same as Unix Terminal. So so that's that's what Jupyter Terminal is about. Uh, so what's the point of creating a terminal in the Jupyter? 
if they are the same, right? If let's say on a Mac, I can just open terminal. Why do I even bother with Jupyter ter Jupyter terminal? So that's uh, you know comes back to the purpose of the Jupyter. So the 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 creator of the Jupyter wants to do research and he doesn't want to get distracted. So he wants to focus on the in one interface and then to be able to do many things. Let's say create a chart. Uh, or do some math formulas and do some coding, uh, also the coding in different language. So that's why uh, he kind of incorporated this terminal thing uh, as part of the Jupyter. So you don't have to open another application and get access to the terminal. So I, I think that's that's all about Jupyter terminal. And uh, I hope this video will be helpful and for you to understand Jupyter terminal. And uh, I'll see you again.